Hi there! You're invited to listen to an exclusive excerpt from the next episode that I'll be publishing on Sunday. My next guest is absolutely fascinating and this is just a teaser of what you can expect from our discussion. Enjoy listening and I'll see you on Sunday for the full episode. Welcome to FinScale, a podcast created by Solène Niederkorn, shedding light on innovation in finance, banking, and insurance. The impact of LLMs and AI in fintech. Bert Bormann, co-founder of Governance.com. Now we're living in an economy where everything is already digital and all of a sudden you add this layer of generative AI on top. So there's almost no barrier for that to be stopped and to be slowed down. Maybe regulation and maybe it should be. But other than that, there's very little things that are, that are holding it back. So I think that this will be one of the biggest shifts in financial services that we've ever seen. Data management is central to the entire financial industry, but this week I wanted to have a conversation with one of the founders of Governance.com, whom I've been following for several years. Bert joined me to explain it all in detail and to discuss how recent advancements, particularly the democratization of large language models, the LLMs, are shifting the landscape. Since stepping down from his role as CEO, Bert has passionately delved into this subject. We discuss governance.com, but more importantly, the impact of AI on fintech using onboarding as a key example. You will find that far from being a minor issue, it is shaping up to be a real game changer. Enjoy the show. Hi, everyone. Hi, Bert. How are you? Very good. Nice to be here. Yes, thank you for joining me for this uh, one of the first video recording that I do on the podcast. I'm very glad that you accepted my invitation. No, definitely. I feel honored. Thank you. So, Bert, we know each other for a while. I remember when you launched your company, it was um, almost 10 years ago, if I remember correctly. More than 10 years, yeah. More than 10 years. And uh, we met when I was in uh, RegTech working for Phenology at that time. So we know each other, but I, I would like you to quickly present yourself uh, to um, the audience and people listening and watching us. Yeah, definitely. So my name is uh, Bert Boerman. I um, am one of the founders, together with my twin brother, actually, of uh, Governance.com, which we founded uh, back in uh, 2014. So a little bit over 10 years ago now. And my background is banking. So I used to be a depository head at AB Nemro and I was in corporate banking and institutional clients. And that's also a little bit uh, why I came up with the idea for governance, because I desperately needed what we ended up creating. So what was the genesis? And the idea was initially to launch this with your brother? Yeah, yeah, we did. So we were actually, at the time, we were running a... An, uh, sort of a development app development business uh, together next to our day jobs, mostly out of just interest of what was happening at the time with HTML5 and uh, and all kind of new technologies that were, that were in the market. So initially, Rob helped me to create a system that I needed to do my job at ABNM Row. And that kind of snowballed into a business idea later on. And then in 2014, we, uh, we decided to, uh, to take the step to, to make the big jump into entrepreneurship. It was in Luxembourg already at that time? Yeah, so I was in Luxembourg. And my, my brother was always in the, in the Netherlands. But you know, nowadays, the, that distance doesn't really matter anymore because you can, uh, especially since COVID, everybody has realized how easy it is to work remotely with each other. But, uh, but since I know my brother pretty well, being my twin, it was even easier for us. I can imagine. So I was interested maybe just to take uh, like seven or eight minutes to go back to uh, the launch of governance.com and that you maybe explain to us what was the initial use case that you've been working on. Yeah. And over the time, how did you adjust this use case to adapt to the specific needs uh, of your clients? Yeah, the initial use case was very much based on what I needed when I was still a banker. So my last function at ABNM was I was head of depository bank, which essentially in Luxembourg means that you have an oversight function over very complex uh, investment funds. Uh, and that's especially when you look at alternative investment funds like real estate funds, private equity, these structures, they tend to get very complex by themselves because of the holding structures. 
And a depository is supposed to be able to perform oversight over all everything that is happening inside the fund, regardless of its complexity. You have accounts, you have movements, you have transactions. And so that's very difficult. And, and also because of the, the type of assets that you are monitoring, this was, this was not possible to do this in traditional banking systems that were much more focused on custody. So custody holding of financial instruments inside a custody chain. And there, I think the market was already pretty well equipped. But then all of a sudden, if you try to do private debt or real estate or private equity, then that doesn't fit in your banking system. Now, these banking systems, they, you know, that's what we typically refer to as legacy software. There's nothing wrong, by the way, with legacy software because what they were programmed in an age where adaptability was much less necessary. Mm -hmm. uh, but they're, very, they're super solid, so they will never break as long as you don't try to make them do things that they're not intended for. Yeah, so, so not so sudden, agile. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And so all of a sudden we were supposed to do different things, different kind of controls, different type of assets, and we, yeah, we couldn't do that in the system. So like everybody else on the market, we did that in spreadsheets. You know, initially that was okay. We, we used to say to the regulator, we have a very sophisticated spreadsheet solution. And that was kind of acceptable at the time, but <laughs> not so much anymore. And so, yeah, so I needed a system and I started brainstorming because with my brother uh, about ideas that I had, but like, what if all the data was sufficiently connected and you could just navigate down the chain of these holding structures and you could automate uh, checklists and, uh, and, and and controls that, I mean, that would be massively helpful. Mm -hmm. And if we would add on top of that, the possibility to connect documents. Now that you've heard an excerpt from the upcoming episode on Sunday, make sure you stay tuned and connected so you don't miss a beat. 